Hi guys, this is Andrew Vygotsky and Britt Contreras asked me to film a short video explaining how to find the hip extension moment in the hip thrust. And it's not as simple as it seems because uh, I'll start first uh, with an example of the squat. So typically people think, okay, there's the barbell if you draw the force vector. Sorry about that. Um, Anyway, if you draw the force vector going down, which would be that line, then the moment arm to the hip would be that, the moment arm to the knee would be that. And while that's true, it ignores uh, all of the body weight, uh, so that's problematic. So a better way to look at it is if we look at the force vector coming up, but then it becomes less accurate as we go up. So it's full of problems and it's not necessarily most accurate, but it does allow for a, a good, fast estimate as opposed to breaking down each segment individually and looking at the moments. So we're gonna use something that's based on that type of idea for the hip thrust, but how we're gonna do it is a little bit different because the hip thrust is a much more complicated exercise and you'll see why in a minute. If we have a load right here on top of the hips, and the force vector from that load is going to go down. Now, one proposed way of looking at it is if we draw the hips over here, there's the femur, there's the torso, and there's the load. And it's not a perfect drawing, I know, but you get the point. Let's say the load is just off center from the hips. That would mean the moment arm is tiny. And that's what some people say. But if you look at how this load acts, this load would act to extend the hip, which means that your hip flexors would have to be used in order to flex the hip or resist that extension, which doesn't make sense. That means the load would do all the work going up. And for what the hip thrust is, that's, that's not a good model. So we have to look at it another way. In the hip thrust, there are two points of contact. There's uh, where the back touches the bench right here, and there's where the foot touches the floor. So if we were to put a force plate right where the foot is, uh, you're gonna see a force vector coming out of the foot. Now, it won't just be vertical, but there will also be a horizontal force vector. And this is because your knees act or your hip or your knee extensors actively try to extend the knee, which is going to try to basically force your shank that way. But because you're on the ground, it the ground is going to try to resist that, and that's going to create a force vector that way. So you're then going to get a force vector that's like that, that's somewhat diagonal. And because this won't account for all of your body's weight plus the load of that there's also going to be a force vector coming out of the bench and it's going to have to be equal and opposite. The horizontal is going to have to be equal and opposite to this. So you have that. And then the vertical is going to have to be the difference between uh, the magnitude of this and the sum of the load plus the body weight. So you're going to have that coming up. So that's going to produce another force vector like that. Now, if we were to extend these force vectors out, and bear with my terrible drawing, then you're going to have to draw the moment arms from the hip joint out to the position of the load vector, or the ground reaction force, and also and these lines basically represent the moment arms, which are the perpendicular distance from the line of action. So that would be the reaction force at the bench and the reaction force at the floor. And those would be the moment arms. Then we would take, so that's the moment arm from the bench. And this is the force from the bench. Then we have the moment arm from the floor. And then we have the force from the floor. So then in order to find the moment at the hip, and we're gonna do the absolute value of it, it's going to be equal to 
the force from the bench times the moment arm from the bench plus the force from the floor times the moment arm from the floor. And that's a very oversimplified way to look at how to find the hip extension moment in the hip thrust. Now there's a much more complicated way and we're gonna to try to come out with a model of this later this year. But until then, you guys can look at it like this. Thanks, hope this helped.